नमस्कार वेलकम इन दिस लेक्चर सीरीज ऑफ ऑन सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियरिंग फंडामेंटल्स दिस इज डॉक्टर ब्राइट केस मैन प्रोफेसर इन कंप्यूटर साइंस एंड इंजीनियरिंग इन सुरेश ज्ञान विहार यूनिवर्सिटी जयपुर इन टूडेज लेक्चर वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट सम मोर कंसेप्ट ऑफ सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियरिंग फंडामेंटल्स सॉफ्टवेयर डिजाइन फंडामेंटल्स एंड द लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस लेक्चर that after uh, through this lecture you will learn about uh, what are the various ways to resolve a complex problem and what is the role of modularity in the software design the second uh, thing is learning expected learning outcomes after the completion of this lecture you will be able to understand the various methods of decomposition of problem that is the simplification of the problem how to simplify uh, the complex problem and how to reduce complexity of the system through effective design method so as you know that designing plays a very important role in the uh, sclc and uh, uh, how to uh, reduce the complexity how to solve the complex problem is uh, Yeah, a big question, and uh, decomposition is the answer of this question. And decomposition of so uh, of the big problem is related uh, to the designing activity. So uh, uh, let us start this uh, session. Uh, these are the points to be discussed in this session. Uh, first is concept of uh, module. We will discuss. we will discuss the concept of modularity and module coupling and its types and lastly we will discuss about the module cohesion and its types so let us start with the concept of module as i earlier said that the complex what is the solution of complex problem to break up the complex problem is the solution suggested by software engineering if you want to solve a big problem you should be uh, you should uh, decompose that problem you should break down this problem the problem into several components so that you can easily uh, uh, solve it so a module is a software component with parts at any level of abstraction and you can say that uh, a system is also uh, when we are talking about modular programming the uh, software there are several modular programmers we are using uh, uh, every day so uh, all the programming languages uh, nowadays are based on the modularity complex the uh, the main focus main stress of uh, main importance of the module is that you can make your system reusable you can make your software reusable you have uh, now there uh, when you are adopting the modular approach of the development of software uh, it is not necessary to uh, design or develop the same module again and again okay so modularity provides you a model provides you the uh reusability concept okay come to the next point that is modularity what is modularity a system is modular if it is composed of well defined conceptual simple and independent units interacting through well defined interfaces so uh, module design uh, reduces the design complexity and results in easier and faster implementation by along para, uh, parallel uh, development of various parts of a system so uh, a modularity is probably the single most important characteristic of a well designed software system and a system is modular if it is composed of well def defined conceptually simple and independent uh, units interacting through well defined interfaces so how to uh, reduce the complexity of the system this is the main responsibility of designing activity the decomposition 
through the decomposition you can uh, make your uh, software system uh, as a modular system and uh, modules mean means unit so you are uh, you, uh, through the adoption of modularity you are designing a separate units various separate units and uh, lastly you uh, and develop them also separately then you uh, combine them uh, itself so after the uh, uh, integration it will uh, uh, build up a whole system a whole software okay so a system is modular if it is composed of well defined conceptual simple and independent units and those uh, the interaction between those units are is very much important so there are several advantages of modular system the first advantage of modular system is uh, that modular systems are easier to understand and explain because uh, their parts make sense and can stand on their own so modular systems are easier to document also because each part can be documented as an independent unit so uh, instead of documentation uh, documenting the whole system it is very much easier to document uh, unit wise okay uh, the third advantage of uh, uh, modular system is that programming individual module is easier because the programmer can focus on just one small simple problem rather than a large or complex problem so uh, he, he, as you all know that uh, the uh, working module or working structure or designing of a working uh, uh, structure implementation of the working unit is easy uh, to develop than the uh, development of entire system so programming of individual modules is easier because the programmer can focus on just one small simple problem rather than a large complex problem then what is the other advantage testing and debugging of individual module is easier because they can be uh, deal with the uh, in isolation from the rest of the program so testing of individual unit is much easier debugging of errors finding of errors from uh, independent unit is a, a simple uh, thing rather than to test the entire software at once then finding of bugs and isolating the bugs when found and understanding about the bugs and fixing of the bugs is very much easier when we are adopting uh, the uh, modular concept okay so and uh, uh, well composed modules are more reusable because they are likely to comprise part of a solution to many problems okay so uh, when we are talking about software engineering when we are learning the software engineering the software invention of software engineering or you can say the development of the software engineering concept is based on the reusability of code so uh, uh, the modularity provides the reusability of the system so modularity specify to the division of software into separate modules which are differently named and addressed and are integrated later on in to, uh, into obtain the completely functional software and it is the only property that allow a program to be intellectually manageable and single large programs are difficult to understand as i earlier said and uh, read uh, uh, difficult to read due to a large number of reference uh, variables control paths global variables etc so uh, what is the basic idea behind the software engineering to make the system to, to make the uh, software 
reusable and modularity will help to use uh, to make the system or software reusable the desirable properties of a modular system are first desirable property that each module is well defined system that can be used with the with other applications yes uh, each module is a well defined structure well defined system and it can be used by the other applications with the other applications so uh, it is the again re, based on the reusability concept each module has single specified objective because but the objective is uh, related to the main objective although each module has a single specified objective but the overall uh, it it is related to the overall objective of the software then uh, modules can be separately compiled and saved in the library uh, uh, it is a desirable property of a modular system module can be separately compiled and saved in the library module should be easier to use than to build and modules are sim uh, simpler from outside than inside so these are the desirable properties of a modular system these are very important uh, yeah, properties of, a, um, uh, of the modular system let us discuss about the advantages and disadvantages of modularity in this topic we will discuss about various advantages and disadvantages of modularity some advantages are uh, it allows as i earlier said that it allows large programs to be written uh, by several or different people it encourages the creation of commonly used routines to be placed in the library and used by the programs it simplifies the uh, overlay the procedure of loading a large program into main storage and it provides more checkpoints to measure progress it provides a framework also for complete testing more accessible to test and lastly uh, it uh, produces the well defined uh, well designed and more readable programs so these are some advantages of modularity there are a huge list of advantages but, but these are some common advantages of modularity although there are uh, several advantages of modularity but some disadvantages of modularity as are also there the first is execution time may be but not certainly longer because there there will be some uh, integration related problem may be occur and then storage size perhaps but is not certainly increased okay then compilation and loading time may be longer we assume that due to modularity this will happen inter module communication problems may be increased and more linkage required run time may be longer more source lines must be written and more documentation has to be done it is true that more link is required when we are uh, adopting the modular uh, modularity concept uh, run time be longer and more source lines must be written and more documentation has to be done but the overall advantage is that we are uh, working with the reusability concept where we the modularity provides us a great advantage let us discuss about the module uh, module coupling and its type coupling is a property of a collection of modules and the context to which modules are independent is called coupling coupling is a measure of the degree of independence between modules in software engineering the coupling is the degree of interdependence between software modules and two modules are that are tightly coupled are strongly dependent on each other so what is recommended what is recommended uh, to 
build a strong uh, software. Reduced coupling is needed. Okay, so two modules are tightly coupled, are strongly dependent on each other, and we make a software when we make modules independent then reduce the coupling okay reduce the dependency of modules on each other however two modules that are loosely coupled are not dependent on each other uncoupled modules have no interdependence at all within them so what is needed what is needed a reduced coupling is needed. Tightly coupled modules provides uh, uh, dependent systems. Okay, so uh, uh, the coupling notation was or, uh, originated in mid 1970s as a way of characterizing WhatsApp program design. The concept to which modules are independent is called coupling. And it is also called uh, called as intermodule coupling because it is a coupling between two modules. Two modules uh, it denotes the dependency of one module to another. Okay, so uh, this is the coupling. You can say the coupling is a property of the collection of modules. Okay. Uh, let us discuss about the types of coupling. The various types of coupling techniques are shown in this figure. Uncoupled or no dependency means these are the modules and there are there is no interaction uh, between modules. Uh, you can see here in this picture that there are no uh, dependencies present uh, in this modular system. Second is loosely coupled. Loosely coupled means some dependencies are there. Some dependencies are there. As you uh, see, as you can see in this figure, module this module is dependent on uh, this module is dependent on this module. Okay. And this module is dependent on this module. And these are, the both modules are dependent on each other. Okay, so there are, these are loosely coupled modules where some dependencies are there, but this is the highly coupled modules. There are several dependencies. These modules are uh, 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 interrelated or interdependent on each other by many reasons. So a good design is the one that has low coupling. This is a very important point. You can uh, understand it. Coupling is measured by the number of relations between the modules. That is, the coupling increases as the number of calls between modules increases on the amount of shared data is large. So it can be said that a design with high coupling will have more errors. Okay, because there are a lot of dependencies. These are the various types of coupling. There are various types of module coupling depicted in this figure. No direct coupling data coupling, stem coupling, control coupling, external coupling, common coupling, and content coupling. Content coupling is the worst, worst coupling and worst type of coupling. And no direct coupling is the best type of coupling. OK, uh, so let us discuss uh, these type of couplings one by one. In the no direct coupling, the modules are independent of, of each other and uh, so uh, they are not really components of a single system. Okay, so uh, this type of coupling is no direct coupling where modules are independent 
to each other. Second is data coupling. Data coupling occurs when modules passes non-global vari variables to another module and modules are independent of each other. It's, uh, when modules can only communicate through passing data elements or informational flags. Okay, so in this type of coupling, means data coupling, the two modules has no need to know what goes on inside the other module. So you can say that modules are not uh, concerned with the internal processing of other module. Higher level module only needs to know what data to pass its subordinate. So only the higher level module is need to know about the uh, data connection connectivity of the subordinate module okay and subordinate module only needs to know what data is required and what data is written so this type of coupling is called data coupling where the uh, communication of data between main module and sub module is uh, important okay uh, next uh, let us talk about stem coupling stem coupling occurs when module passes non global data structure or entire structure to another module and here module are more dependent to each other and in this type of stem coupling exposes modules to many to more data than they need in uh, stem coupling expose exposes modules to uh, more data than they need and a change in data structure will affect all modules that use it and two modules are, must have some knowledge of the internal working of other module that use the same data structure so when uh, the two data are using the same data structure then uh, they should know they must know the knowledge of uh, they should know about the internal working of each other okay so uh, such type of coupling is called stem coupling and in the control coupling control coupling occurs when modules passes control flags or switches to another module the sending module must know a great deal about the inner working of the receiving module okay so in the uh, control coupling one module uh, controls the internal functionality of another module then uh, the common coupling common coupling occurs when modules refers to the same global data area or data structure and modules that use the same data have quite high level of interdependence and this is undesirable as errors can spread throughout the system. So common coupling means the modules refers the common global data or the share the common global data common global data area or data structure or their use. So such kind of coupling is called common coupling. The last one is content coupling. Content coupling occurs when one module directly refers to the inner working of another module. Okay, so it is the content coupling when it is a worst type of coupling because uh, they, the modules in this type of coupling, all, all modules are dependent. Uh, one module is totally dependent to the other module. So uh, modules are highly dependent to each other in this kind of coupling. So this, this kind of coupling, you can say, is a worst type of coupling. Next, uh, yes, this is the illustration of, uh, simple illustration of uh, coupling. No direct coupling, there is no direct coupling between M1 and M2, okay. Uh, in this case, modules are subordinates to uh, different modules. Therefore, no direct coupling is there. M1 and M2, there is no direct coupling. Okay. 
but M1 has their subordinates. In the data coupling, uh, and this is the uh, best uh, type of coupling. The, in the data coupling, when data is one module is passes to other module, this is called data coupling. Okay, so this is called data coupling as illustrated in the figure. Stam coupling, two modules are stam coupled if they communicate using composite data item such as the structure, if they are using the common data item like a structure, objects, etc., then they are called calling as stam coupling. Okay, control coupling. Control coupling exists among two mod modules if data from one module is used to direct the structure of, of instruction execu execution in another. In the external coupling, uh, external coupling arises and two modules share an extremely imposed data format communication protocol or device interface. So if modules are two modules sharing, devices also. Common coupling, two modules are common coupled if they share information through some global data items. So uh, two modules are common coupled if they share the global data item. The seventh is content coupling. Content coupling exists among two modules if they share code. Like, for example, a branch from one module into another module. Okay, so this is about coupling. I hope you understand the uh, concept of coupling and uh, how to make a system reliable, how to make a system more independent. The solution is to reduce the level of coupling. Okay. The next thing, next uh, content or next uh, idea, next topic is module cohesion and its types. Cohesion means what? Cohesion is a property or characteristics of an individual property. Means module strength. Here you can see in this picture. Cohesion means strength of relations within module. This is the module and internal functionality, internal communication, communication between internal components of a module, single module, is very much important and which provides the strength to a module. Okay, internal communication, com uh, communication between internal components which provides the strength to the module, but communication between one module to another, when it is very much high, it will increase the dependency and it is called as, uh, it, it increase the dependency and it increase the complexity also. So such a time, type of uh, coupling is not required, but what is required to improve the level of cohesion? To improve the level of cohesion, you can reduce the coupling. In computer programming, cohesion defines to the degree to which the elements of a module belong together. Thus, cohesion measures the strength of the relationship between pieces of functionality within a given module. For example, in highly cohesive systems, functionality is strongly related, as I uh, told you earlier. Cohesion is an ordinal type of measurement and is generally described as high cohesion or low cohesion. Okay, these are the types of cohesion, different types of cohesion. So, in potential, you can say that cohesion is highly highest in modules that have a single clear logical independent responsibility, responsibility or role. Okay, and cohesion uh, degrades and unrelated responsibilities or tasks as added to a module. One practical and long-standing practice for achieving cohesion is to form module that implement data types. So it is cohesion is a great advantage or to 
the object of the entire analysis and design and cohesion is a very important concept uh, there are several types of cohesion exist first is functional cohesion second is sequential cohesion third is communicational cohesion fourth is procedural cohesion fifth is temporal cohesion sixth is logical cohesion and seventh is coincidental cohesion so what is the what type of like uh, coupling what type of cohesion is the worst cohesion coincidental cohesion is the worst cohesion where there is uh, about no uh, relationship between the components of a single module okay and what is the best cohesion functional cohesion is the best cohesion okay so the functional cohesion is said to exist if the different elements of a module operate to achieve a single function the name of module will indicate its function functional cohesion okay so name itself is the uh, is describe the working of a such type of cohesion all statements within a module are based on one function and it is the best cohesion as the module performs a single specific function so this is a uh, functional cohesion functional cohesion is the best cohesion uh, you can say then sequential cohesion uh, a module is said to uh, possess sequential cohesion if the elements of a module form the component of the sequence where the output from one component of the sequence is input to the next yes it is a general phenomena that the output of one component is uh, working as input to the next and this is maintain a sequence so cohesion in a sequential manner is called sequential cohesion the instruction inside a module are related to each other through the input data and the first instructions act on the data that are passed into the module the second instruction uses the output of the first instruction as its input and so on so the sequence of event is very important in this type of sequential cohesion the next one is commun communicational cohesion a module is said to be to have communicational cohesive if all tasks of the module refer to or update the same data structure that is the set of functions defined on an array or a stack so uh, modules are communicationally cohesive if they ask uh, to refer uh, or to update the same data structure okay uh, the activities are related to each other by the data that the module uses and each instruction acts on the same input data or is concerned with the same output data sequence is not important remember this thing that sequence is not important in the communicational cohesion let us discuss about the procedural cohesion a uh, module is said to be the procedural cohesion if the set of pro purpose of the module are all parts of a procedure in which particular sequence of steps has to be carried out for achieving a goal that is the algorithm for decoding a message okay the instructions in a module are related to each other to flow of control and the instructions are grouped together because 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 of a particular procedural order okay and sequence is again important in procedural cohesion remember this thing it is very much important the instructions are more related to other modules than they are to uh, connect to each other so procedural cohesion is the cohesion uh, if the set of purpose of the module are all part of the procedure in which particular sequence of steps has to be carried out to achieve the goal okay 
let us discuss the another type of cohesion that is temporal cohesion when a module includes functions that are associated by the fact that all the methods must be executed in the same time the module is set to exhibit temporal cohesion okay when uh, when a module includes functions that are associated by the fact that all the methods must be executed in the same time that is the temporal cohesion the instructions in the module are related to each other through the flow of control and the instructions are grouped together because they occur at about the same point in time and these instructions perform more than one function okay so uh, for example the initializing module at the beginning of the program which contain initialization step without affecting other modules so uh, you can say it as a temporal cohesion let us discuss about the functional cohesion module is said to be logically cohesive uh, logical cohesion a uh, module is said to be logically cohesive if all the elements of the module perform a single operation like for example you can say the error handling the data input and data output these are the uh, examples of logical cohesion the instructions are hardly related to each other at all so in the logical cohesion the instructions are grouped together due to certain classes or activities and a flag that is passed from outside will determine which set of instruction is to be executed so logical cohesion uh, the uh, communication between internal components of the uh, module uh, are based on some type of logic Uh, next is coincidental cohesion a module is said to have coincidental cohesive if it performs a ta- set of tasks that are associated with each other very loosely if at all so coincidental cohesion means what the mo- there is uh, very much uh, less or you can say uh, less association between components of a single module or you can say the uh, the components are loosely associated with each other so this type of cohesion is called coincidental cohesion which is the worst type of cohesion okay so uh, there are there is a, a, a difference between coupling and cohesion when you compare the coupling and cohesion coupling is also called as intermodule binding where cohesion is called as intra module binding coupling shows the in- relationship between modules and cohesion shows the relationship within the module and coupling shows the relationship and the relative independence between the modules and cohesion shows the modules the relative functional strength okay and while creating you should aim for low coupling that is dependency among modules should be less which is the um which is the solution of complexity okay and while creating of cohesion you should aim to high cohesion that is a cohesive component or module focuses on a single function that is a single function with little interaction with other module of the system so when you want to reduce the coupling you uh, reduce the complexity of the system uh, you should make you should reduce the level of coupling and increasing increase the level of cohesion in coupling modules are linked to the other modules and in cohesion the modules focuses on a single thing so this is the basic difference between coupling and cohesion so this is all about the uh, software design um, modularity fundamental and concept of modularity 
and coupling and cohesion. Now this is the time for assessment. We are uh, having ten multiple choice questions. The first question is which of the property of software modularity is incorrect with respect to benefit software modularity? The uh, there are four options. First option is modules are robust. Second is modules can use other modules. Third is modules can be separately compiled and stored in a library. And fourth is modules are commonly independent. So the answer is modules are commonly independent because modularity cannot bring benefits unless the modules are autonomous or independent. So the right answer is B. Modules are mostly independent. In the second question, cache is a major of the degree of independence between modules. The four options are cohesion, coupling, none of the mention, all of the mention. The answer is coupling. Coupling is a major of the degree of interdependence between modules. Okay, so coupling or dependency is the degree to which each program module rely on each other each one of the other module okay so the right answer is b that is coupling In the third question which of the following is the best type of module module coupling uh, con control coupling stamp coupling data coupling or content coupling so what is the answer the answer is c data coupling which is the best type of coupling data coupling is the best type of coupling then the dependency between modules a and b is said to be the data coupled if their dependency is based on the fact they communicate by only passing of data in the fourth question which of the following is the worst type of module coupling control coupling stamp coupling ex external coupling or content coupling the answer is C, external coupling. Content coupling occurs when module A changes data of module B or when control is passed from one module to the middle of another. So the answer is the answer is C. Uh, in the fifth question, which of the following is the worst type of module cohesion? Logical cohesion, temporal cohesion functional cohesion or coincidental cohesion answer is coincidental cohesion because coincidental cohesion exists in modules that contains instructions that have little or more relationship to one another okay so the right answer is d in the sixth question which of the following is the best type of module cohesion functional cohesion temporal cohesion functional uh, uh, and sequential cohesion the answer is a uh, functional cohesion functional cohesion is a type of cohesion in which the tasks performed by a software modules are contribute to the performance of a single function so what is the answer answer is a functional cohesion in the seventh question a uh, software engineer must design the modules with the goal of high cohesion and low coupling. Is it true or false? It is, it is true. If the software is not properly modularized, a host of uh, uh, changes will result into death of the project. So uh, the sentence is true. In the eighth question, in what type of coupling the complete data structure is passed from one module to another? Control coupling, stam coupling, external coupling, or content coupling? The answer is stam coupling. In the stam coupling, the complete data structure is passed from one module to another. Okay. In the ninth question, if all tasks must be executed in the same time span, what type of cohesion is being exhi exhibited? The options are functional cohesion, 
temporal cohesion, functional uh, uh, cohesion, and sequential cohesion. The answer is B. Temporal cohesion is the right answer. A module exhibits temporal cohesion when it contains tasks that are related by the fact that all tasks must be executed in the same time span. So the right answer is B, that is temporal cohesion. In the tenth question, a design is said to be a good design if the components are strongly coupled, weakly cohesive, strongly coupled and weakly cohesive, strongly cohesive and weakly coupled. The answer is strongly cohesive and weak, weakly coupled. Strongly coupled because strongly coupled modules will increase the complexity and it is not recommended to uh, in the best design for the best design and loosely cohesive is not recommend, recommended. So strongly cohesive and weakly coupled are highly recommended. Okay. So this is, these are 10 objective type questions related to the content delivered today and these are some reference books if you have any doubt or you have any query then you can consult with these books for further query i hope this lecture provides you a clear cut understanding about the topic that we have chosen for today uh, have a good day thank you very much thank you